Hello, folks. Welcome back. Yes, you're not on the wrong YouTube channel. This is Dr. Barry. Beckett Barry requested that I be blippy for Halloween. So that's what I am. We're going to do a little trick or treaty later this evening. Uh, for any of you guys watching from other parts of the world that don't do this thing on Halloween, we dress up in a crazy costume and go out and knock on strangers' doors and ask for candy. It's a very odd tradition, but we do that every year. Happy Halloween, everyone. Happy Samhain. Healthy and Keto likes my costume. Good, because I don't, I'm not exactly completely comfortable. I've watched way too much Blippy. Blippy, if you're watching, hello, brother, how are you? I love the excavator videos, but I don't know. I think you wear the costume better than I do. These suspenders aren't doing right. Yeah, yeah. Becky Berry is dressed as Blippy. I am Blippy, and Nisha is Madam Blippy. We are all Blippy for Halloween. I think Nisha just posted a picture on her Instagram. I'm not sure. So I'm going to hang out with you guys for a few minutes and um, try to answer some questions about medicine, nutrition, human health, human diet, and uh, hopefully we can do this with a straight face. Since I am uh, Andrea from Brazil, hey, I don't know if you guys do this. It's not carnival here, but we, we do this for Halloween. Happy Halloween, everyone. Happy Samhain. B-L-I-P-P-I. -P -P -I. That spells Blippi. Good job. See, I've watched Blippi a lot. All right. Frank L. says, whoa, come back. It's not stopping. Hang on, Frank L. Says, uh, Dr. Barry, what should I eat if I'm OMAD? After a hard workout at the gym, you should eat lots of meat and eggs, maybe a little cheese, maybe a little veg if you want it, maybe a few berries if you want it, but... Uh, Always, always, always fatty meat and, and eggs. And then you can add whatever to that that you would like. Happy Halloween, everyone. I hope my costume is not offensive or triggering to anyone in any way. Uh, Shas Heavenly Life says, how to get thick and strong hair. Please uh, guide me. Thank you. Shas, I've got a YouTube video all about hair loss and uh, the, the vitamins, minerals, and fatty acids and amino acids that help you have the most luxurious hair possible for your genetics and your age and your hormone status. So check that out. It's on this same YouTube channel. What do you think, Bradley? Am I, am I rocking the blippy outfit? What are you guys? Are any of you guys dressed up as anything? Miss Sendin woman has one kidney. Uh, if, if any of you guys have one kidney or if you have some degree of chronic kidney disease, kidney damage, you need to protect your remaining kidney function like gold. And the way you do that is the following. You keep your carbohydrate intake very, very low. There is an epidemic of diabetic nephropathy and kidney failure because of diabetes. And uh, that, that causes more cases of kidney failure than every other cause pretty much can combined. So that tells us that having a high blood sugar or a high insulin level is very, very detrimental to our kidney function. So you want to eat a very low carbohydrate diet. That's going to keep your blood sugar and your serum insulin levels normal. You want to make sure you're eating plenty of protein. Protein is not bad for your kidneys. Protein is good for your kidneys. You want to make sure you're salting your food to taste. Salt is not bad for your kidneys. Salt is good for your kidneys. You want to make sure you're getting plenty of vitamins and minerals. I would avoid all grains of any kind, wheat, rice, oats, corn entirely, if I had any degree of kidney trouble or one kidney. And I would have definitely avoid all of the vegetable seed oils like canola oil, soybean, safflower, sunflower, sesame oil, peanut oil. I would avoid all those. Vegetable shortening, Crisco, plant butter, which is basically a euphemism for margarine. I would avoid all those things and eat real ancestrally appropriate one ingredient, whole foods that humans have been eating for a million years. That's what I would eat. Everybody seems to not be offended by my costume. Hey, thanks for the super chat, JM. Happy Halloween, everyone. Are you dressed up? What are you dressed as? Uh, 
<laughs> we're, we're probably not going to have many trick or treaters here. Uh, if we do, we'll give them some bacon or a boiled egg or a can of sardines or something. I think kids will quickly realize that they come here for real food, not for silly treats. Jen Atkins says, I'm pregnant. The last two weeks I've eaten not much good stuff. I feel guilty, but can't stomach anything else. Do you think I've done much damage? Now, I, I, you know, anytime we dwell in the past, Jen, we're not helping the future at all. Even if you have done some damage eating junk over the last two weeks, what would be the better course of action for you right now? Would it be to dwell on that and continue to eat the junk just because you're a loser and, and you, you've you screwed everything up? Or would the best course of action for you be for you, Jen, right now to say, okay, yeah, I made some bad choices the last few days and that's it. That's the end of that. From this day forward, I'm going to eat only real human food that's going to help optimize my health and optimize the health of my baby who I'm currently cooking in my oven. All you guys, if you if you fell off the wagon, if you've done anything, if you've drank too much alcohol, if you ate a bunch of carbs, how is dwelling on that? How does that help you? Because your goal is to achieve optimal health, right? Isn't that your goal? To lose fat, to put on muscle, to make your bones stronger, to make your brain stronger and faster and smarter. Dwelling on the past doesn't help with any of those things. None. Zero. It literally helps with none of those. So, don't do it. Don't waste another instant of your time or ounce of your energy worrying about what you did yesterday. I want you to focus everything you've got on today and tomorrow because those are the most important days of your life. You cannot get tomorrow back. You cannot change that, Jen. Don't even focus. Don't why why don't even ask me that question again. Your what what your question should have been is what can I do better today and tomorrow? And Jen, you already know the answer to that don't you? So start right now at this moment in time and forget forget what you did the last two weeks and start eating a proper human diet right now. All right. Thank you, Jen, for the super chat. Let's see here. I got JM. Thanks for the super chat, Joel. Uh, Jean Sh Sebastian Dalcourt says, I'm doing 500 calorie a day diet for 12 weeks to lose 75 pounds. Do you think I should avoid exercising like if it was a pure water fast? I think you should get some kind of exercise every day, Jean Sebastian. And I, I don't think you should be doing a 500 calorie diet. It's not healthy. It's going to slow down your metabolism, hopefully not permanently, but it definitely will slow down your metabolism and any weight that you do gain. Uh, over the 12 weeks eating 500 calories a day, as soon as you stop eating 500 calories a day, you're going to gain the weight back. You have to lose the fat and keep it off by eating a proper human diet, which is very low carb, no sugar, no grains, no vegetable seed oils, lots of fatty meat and eggs, and eat to your full. You cannot, I mean, you, you might be strong enough to semi-starve yourself for 12 weeks. I am not. A lot of people are not, and I don't think that's a good strategy at all. Karen says, what are your thoughts on NAC, which is N-acyl cysteine? I think it's okay. I think it's fine. Your body makes this if you're eating a proper human diet. But if you want to take a supplement of it, I think it's fine. I don't think it'll hurt you at all. Whether it'll help you or not is another question. Thank you, Terry, very much for the super chat. Hillary says, can keto help ocular migraines? We've had thousands of, of men and women, mainly women, but men to reach out and say that their migraines are much less severe and they have migraines much less often when they're eating a proper human diet. So I'm 100% for that. Stella, I'm blippy because this is Halloween and Beckett Berry wanted me to be blippy and therefore I am blippy. I'm not proud of it, but I'm, I'm happy about it. Am I? Yeah, the, the outfit's cute, Olga. I don't know about me. Uh, Gregory, our farm's going great. We've got sheep, quail, chicken, turkey. I'm going to be getting some pigs soon. Uh, we're going to have meat in every nook and cranny of the pasture. That's the plan. Uh, Tia says, hi, Dr. Barry. Is it true that one of the causes of headaches is not drinking enough water? Uh 
perhaps to you, if you were in the desert and literally had no access to water for 24 hours, that might give you a headache. But remember, every bite of food you take contains water and that water counts. Uh, there is absolutely no research that shows that gulping lots of extra water during the day will decrease your risk of a migraine or any other headache. Uh, it's, it's so funny. People, they don't believe in the magic of low carb, but by God, they believe in the magic of drinking a gallon of water a day or three liters of water a day. They'll, they'll buy that and they'll swallow it hook, line and sinker and bet their entire health future on, I'm just going to drink two gallons of water a day by God. And that's going to fix every health problem I've got. That's just the dumbest thing in the world. I, I'm not you, Tia, but whoever told you that, whatever video you saw that on, it's just, it's just lunacy. If you're thirsty, drink water. If you're not thirsty, don't drink water. Drinking more water than your body wants is in no way therapeutic. It, it doesn't solve any problems. It's silly. Does that make sense? Uh, Jane says, is there a keto, uh, a network of ketovore friendly doctors? I have a YouTube video on this channel called How to Find a Low Carb Doctor Near You. In the show notes of that video, I have five or six websites that you can put your zip code into that will tell you where the nearest low carb friendly doctor is. And these uh, websites in, in the show notes of this video are from all over the world. So even in the UK, Australia, Europe and other places, there's going to be low carb friendly doctors and any doctor that's low carb friendly is also going to understand ketovore and what you're trying to accomplish with that. Uh, Ann Henson, these are blippy glasses. Okay. This is a blippy costume. Uh, the blippy is a YouTube phenomenon. I mean, he is, makes my channel look like a, uh, it has training wheels on and some of his videos get like 80 million views. He, he entertains kids and he teaches kids. Uh, and we let Beckett watch it because he'll like go to the, uh, excavation site and he'll show bulldozers and excavators and backhoes and how they work. And so Beckett's learned lots of stuff about excavators. There's even an excavator song, which I may or may not sing for you guys if I get enough requests for that. But these, this is a blippy costume for Halloween. Happy Halloween, Ann Henson. Happy Samhain, everybody. Does anybody not know what Samhain is? Amber says she's being tested for hypokalemic attacks, carnivore four months and keto over a year. Yeah, if you're having hypokalemic attacks, Amber, you need to ingest more potassium. I've got a video on this channel about uh, potassium rich foods that are keto friendly. You can also use something like uh, Keto Chow's daily mineral drops or Keto Chow's electrolyte drops or uh, Redmond's Relight powders to get plenty of, of potassium and also magnesium. So if you're having that problem, then you definitely need to supplement. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, getting down done says I'm bacon bleepy. That's right. I should have, I need a piece of bacon sticking in my pocket. Uh, Karen asked about what's the best kind of water to drink. I, uh, so this is an interesting topic. We've already discussed the fact that you only drink water if you're thirsty. That's what all mammals on the planet do. Can you imagine a deer out in the, the wild and be like, Oh, I've got a rash. I need to drink, try to drink a gallon of water a day. No, they just drink when they're thirsty and that's what you should do too. But so uh, I recommend getting either a distillation, home distillation kit that hooks up to your incoming water supply or a re reverse osmosis. And the, the objection to that every time is, oh, you're, you're getting rid of all the, the minerals in the water. Well, most water, the only minerals that it has in it is fluoride and chlorine. And I'm not interested in drinking excess amounts of either one of those. So I filter those out and then I put minerals back in my water. Every glass of water I drink like this, I put 10 drops of daily minerals in it. Okay. So I'm getting rid of minerals that I'd rather not have in my body, like fluoride and chlorine. Then I'm putting good minerals back in. Uh, our ancestors 100,000 years ago drank river water stream water, mud puddle water. So they got plenty of minerals, plenty of electrolytes. They also did, they, they didn't have the apparatus to hang the big game they killed, hang it up and drain the blood. So every bite of meat that they ate had more blood in it than, than you probably eat in a month. So they got plenty of minerals from that, plenty of, plenty of vitamins and plenty of electrolytes. 
So uh, our ancestors had plenty of minerals from the water they drank and from the blood that they ingested. We don't have that luxury of having mineral rich water. Don't drink mud puddle water. Okay. You'll, you'll wind up in the ER with the shits, but that's how they, they, they were used to that. So they could do that, but we have to mimic that. And the way we do that is with something like that. Peggy wants me to sing the excavator song. I don't know that I know all the words to it. Nisha may have to come help me. Uh, Janice, bottled water is okay. We drink a lot of sparkling water like San Pellegrino, uh, Topo Chico, now that they fixed the PFAS problem. And Perrier, we try to always buy the water in glass bottles if we can. That's not always possible, but anytime you have the option of plastic over glass, always choose glass, even if it's a little more expensive because it's going to be much better for your health to do that. Uh, yeah, Twin Flames Acres ask about, what about a Berkey filter? Berkey filters are amazing. We have a Berkey filter still in the box, just in case times get tough. Uh, Berkey filter, I think every family in the country should have a Berkey filter in the closet. Uh, it does not filter as much stuff out as reverse osmosis does. That's what we have. We, had a, we have a built-in reverse osmosis under the, the sink in the kitchen and that's all of our drinking water and cooking water comes from that. And then we add back in good, healthy minerals with this stuff. Yeah, this is just a spur of the moment live, Jerry. I, I was just uh, feeling productive and, and feeling helpful and I wanted to help somebody. Kathy wants me to sing the excavator song. Hey, Nisha, I don't know the words to the excavator song. Uh, <laughs> which is the one Beckett always sings or is it about the tractor? But how does it go? I forgot. Yeah, but well, I know that part. What's the next part? Happy Halloween, everyone. I'm Blippy, by the way, in case you didn't know. Uh, Miss Karen asked about spring water. Yeah, if you've got access to a, a real spring water, I would 100% trust that and use that unless there's a, a uh, bear plant or a DuPont plant or a Monsanto plant around. You're, it's probably very good water and real spring water that comes out of the ground is very often very rich in minerals uh, or at least more so. But now if, it, if you buy it from the store and it says spring water on the container, it's all there's almost a 100% chance that that is... Uh, tap water from some municipality that they literally bottled up and put spring water on the front. Yeah. Hi, Blippi. Yep. I'm Blippi today. You guys laugh it up, laugh it up. That's fine. Uh, Boat says, do you always recommend more protein for kidney disease or stop recommending it past a certain severity? Boat, every human on the planet has a protein requirement. If you don't eat enough protein, regardless of you, even if you don't have kidneys, if you're on 100% dialysis and you have no kidney function at all, you still have a protein requirement or you, your bones and your muscles and your internal organs will waste away and you will get sicker, you'll suffer, and you'll die. We have to have protein regardless of how good or how bad our kidney function is. That's number one. Number two, it's a myth that a, a diet full of healthy protein is somehow harmful or bad for your kidneys, that animal protein is somehow is going to damage or harm your kidneys. None of that is true. That's a myth that's been in medicine that I've been trying to stamp out for 20 years. It's, it's, it's bullshit. There's not an ounce of truth to it. And it doesn't even make any sense if you just think about it from a common sense standpoint. But then when you dig deeper and try to find the research, like, okay, where's the research? Show me where, it, where it's been proven that, a, that a, a diet with sufficient protein in it is harmful for the human kidney. You can't find it. Anywhere. There's no research that, that proves that. Uh, Boat's mom has one kidney left, so she needs to protect that kidney like gold. We talked about this earlier, Boat. If you missed it, you can go back and watch this on the replay. I go over all the details. Linda says, I had my gallbladder removed 28 years ago. Should I take ox bile? I think you can definitely experiment with taking ox bile. But now, Linda, if you're eating keto right now and you're not having any gut problems, diarrhea, constipation, bloating, you probably don't need it. But anybody who just had their gallbladder taken out, 
you might benefit greatly from taking an ox bile supplement that will help you break down and digest the healthy fats in a, in a keto diet, a ketovore diet, or a carnivore diet. David G says, I'm on low carb, high fat diet. I struggle to maintain gain weight, been thin my whole life. What can I do to economically and healthfully maintain and gain weight? So you're only going to lose down to a certain weight, David, on a proper human diet, which is low carb, high fat, because it's not a weight loss diet. Keto, ketovore, carnivore, they are weight optimization diets. Nisha and I have seen many people gain weight on them if they needed to. But most of us have extra fat we need to lose. And that's why a low carb, high fat diet is so popular is because it helps you lose that extra fat that you don't need. But if you're slender, David, you're not going to just keep losing weight. You're going to lose down to an ideal set point and you'll stick right there. Now, if you want to gain weight, you got two options. If you want to gain muscle and bone strength, then you're going to start lifting heavy weights with your low carb, high fat diet and, and running sprints and lifting heavy things. If you want to gain fat, then you're just going to start eating more carbohydrates. Uh, you could start drinking a gallon of fruit juice a day. You will gain fat super fast. OK, but I, I'm guessing you want to gain muscle and, so, and, and gain bone strength and gain tendon and ligament and cartilage strength. And you're going to do that by eating lots of fatty meat on a low carb, high fat diet and lifting heavy things and running very fast. The Connolly said, thanks for saving me from diabetes, Dr. Barry. At start, I had an A1C of 12. One year later, my A1C is now 4.8. Any of you guys with prediabetes or type 2 diabetes, did you hear that? The Connolly started with an A1C of 12 and now it's 4.8. Eight. Gorgeous. Well done, Connellys. Well done. Anyone else reversed a, a really high A1C down to now a beautiful normal A1C? Put that in the comments so people can see that. That happens so many, so often and so regularly on a proper human diet that sometimes we forget to talk about it because it's just it, we just know it's going to happen. Uh, Gigi says, I love to drink wine occasionally. I grav gravitate towards the new low carb, low sugar wines. It wreaks havoc on my system, especially at night. Yep. Uh, any wine, any alcohol whatsoever that you drink is bad for you. 100% period. That's it. Okay. With that being said, Gigi, if you want to have a glass of wine every now and then with the full understanding that this is not healthy, is not good for you, does not in any way benefit your heart, or any other organ of your body, then have your glass of wine. That's fine. But what I don't want you guys to do is think, well, I read this article in on, on PubMed or no, on uh, what is it, uh, WebMD, that red wine's good for your heart. That's stupid. Okay. Alcohol's poison. It has to break down and go through the aldehyde stage. It's not good for your body. But if you like a glass of wine or a mixed drink occasionally, it's not the end of the world. Um, just drink the lowest carb, lowest sugar content wine you can, Gigi, without getting those side effects. I'm assuming you mean um, colon side effects. Julia says, yes, I reverse type 2 diabetes. No more meds for me. How many people are taking a medication right now for diabetes, for blood pressure, for cholesterol, that you would just assume not have to take anymore? Because I'm telling you guys, I'm not joking. I'm not trying to sell you something, even though I am dressed up like a clown. I'm being dead serious when I tell you, if you'd like to have a normal A1C and a normal blood pressure, normal triglycerides, normal HDL, you've got to eat a proper human diet. That's going to do it where, where no pill or injection on the planet will give you all those things. It just won't happen. It's impossible for a pill or an injection to do that. All right, let's see. DJ BD says two weeks into keto and no gout attacks and glucose levels averaging 110, and that's off both daily meds. Yeah, another big myth that's out there is if you eat lots of meat, you'll have a gout attack. Or if you eat a keto diet, you'll have gout, or low carb, high fat, you'll have gout. Again, this is complete foolishness. The human physiology does not work that way. Uh, you do not have to eat a low purine diet. If you've had a gout attack in the, in the past, that has nothing to do with the formation of gout. Gout comes from high blood sugar, high insulin, high levels of chronic inappropriate inflammation and ingesting too much fructose, either from fruit juice or too much just raw fruit. 
that those are the things that cause gout flare-ups, okay? I've got a YouTube video on this channel about gout. If you've ever had a gout attack, I know they're terrible, but keto is not going to give you a gout attack. Carnivore is not going to give you a gout attack. Eating meat does not cause gout, nor does it cause you to have a gout flare-up. Thank you, DJ. David Brooks, his A1C went from 7.5 to 5.2 in five months. Less than a year, and he'd probably been on uh, type 2 diabetes medication for how many decades, David? And his A1C either stayed the same or kept going up. But when he started eating a proper human diet, it was fixed in five months. That's what eating a proper human diet will do for you. Julia had reversed her type 2. She's off all meds. Who else? Hey, there's Sonia from the Netherlands. Hey, Sonia. Uh, for those of you just joining, I am dressed as Blippi because it is Halloween here. And Becky Berry loves Blippi. He's a YouTube character that teaches kids about stuff. And this is his outfit. This is what he wears. And he sings about excavators and um, bulldozers and tractors. And he, he's pretty cool. He's pretty funny. If you're watching Blippi, uh, don't be offended. I'm not trying to copy you, brother. I'm just... This is a form of uh, praise. My my twenty my two year old loves you, Blippy. So there you go. Cell uh, JD Knight says I'm off all four diabetes medications. A1C down from eleven point four to five point one with the proper human diet, guys. That's it. How many how many of you guys are taking three blood pressure medications or three or four diabetes medications? Do you have a loved one who's taking a handful of medications for diabetes and, and cholesterol and blood pressure? This is the way for them. You're welcome to share this video with them. It might freak them out because I'm dressed like Blippi. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Lena says, I have recently learned hydrochlorothiazide, also called HCTZ, can cause insulin resistance. I've been on it for years. What is a safe diuretic? My A1C was 8. Now it's 4.9. So, uh, HCTZ is fairly safe, but it, it, I don't know if it causes insulin resistance, but it definitely raises your blood sugar a little bit, but it sounds like you've got that under control, Lena. Have a conversation with your doctor. Any of you guys who are taking HCTZ or any of the thiazide diuretics, they, they're going to raise your blood sugar some. Talk to your doctor about switching to a different diuretic, or do I even still need this diuretic? Because a lot of you guys, you get used to taking a medicine. And then you start eating a proper human diet and whatever you were taking the medicine for, the proper human diets fixed it in three months, six months, 12 months. But you're still taking this pill out of habit. You think you still need it, but you don't. And so, Lynn, Lena, I'd have a conversation with your doctor and say, do I still need this? Can I can I cut the dose in half? All you guys, when you see your doctor, say, do I st every single time you see your doctor say, do I still need this medicine? Can I take a lower dose? Is there a safer medicine with fewer side effects than I can switch to? Those need to be your questions every time you see your doctor. Hey, Kevin Snyder. Kevin's in the house, the PhD mentor. Muriel says, what to do for a liver problem? Never smoke or, smoked or drank. Uh, Muriel, it depends on what the liver problem is. So I can tell you that eating a proper human diet is going to help your your liver better than any other diet. If you're eating a high carbohydrate diet, if you're eating a high fructose diet, high sugar diet, lots of grains, that's going to make your liver have to work extra hard to detoxify all that crap. Fully laden swallow says, Hey, Dr. Blippy, I'm an excavator. Excavator. Hey, dirt. See you later. That's the excavator song. Uh, recently had an abdominal ultrasound revealed very mild aneurysmal di dilatation in my iliac arteries, thoughts and concerns. Yeah. So, uh, you probably had the ultrasound because you're a certain age or you have a certain set of risk factors. This is, it is good that your doctor checked the ultrasound, but what you found is probably doesn't mean anything because it's not big enough to actually be classified as an aneurysm. But now you're caught with, you need to monitor that either, either either once or twice a year, you need to have a repeat ultrasound to make sure it's not growing, getting bigger. Because once your artery gets to a certain size, it becomes aneurysmal in nature and it'll need to be fixed. Uh, hopefully, if you're eating a proper human diet, which I think you are fully laden swallow, uh, 
I think that you won't have problems with the aneurysm getting larger because your blood pressure is going to be pretty decent. Your blood sugar is going to be perfect. Your insulin level is going to be perfect and your levels of inflammation are going to be great. So that, that your iliac artery is probably just going to stay this same size the rest of your life and you'll never have to have the surgery. Let's see what else we got here. I think I've got all the super chats. Uh, I don't just answer super chats, folks. I, I try to answer as many questions as I can. Uh, Mama Max says, can you cure hypothyroidism and get off medications doing a PhD? Probably not. Uh, now, if you have Hashimoto's, we've, which is a, a form of autoimmune thyroiditis, we've seen multiple people, including my wife, Nisha, who if you don't, if you have any kind of thyroid issue, you should follow her. Her handle is Nisha Loves It. And uh, she has Hashimoto's and is currently in remission eating a proper human diet. But if you've already developed hypothyroidism, you're probably going to have to be on some dosage of thyroid replacement hormone. Uh, but I think that uh, many people have reached out and said, I used to have to take 100 of uh, levothyroxine a day. And now on a proper human diet, I'm, I, my thyroid's doing great with just 50. We've seen tons of people be able to take less medicine. And we always encourage you, if you have hypothyroidism, to be taking a desiccated thyroid hormone replacement. Don't take synthetic thyroid levothyroxine. That's fake T4. Glenn says, I have a proper human singing voice. Thank you, Glenn. Oh, uh, Maria says, I look like Elton John in the 70s. Uh, that was way before my time, Maria. I don't know what you're talking about. For those of you just joining, if you're if this is the first time you've ever caught a live, type new in the comments so me and my my uh, moderators can welcome you. There's Mitzi Champion; she's a great source of information. Her and, and Kevin both are wonderful sources of uh, information, and Paola as well. They a lot of times they'll answer newbie questions in the comments uh, so that I can answer questions that that don't get answered as often. Austin says, tips on how to gain weight while lifting and on carnivore. Lift heavy weights, Austin. That literally, that is how you do it. Now, if your genetics are not uh, appropriate for getting very muscly, then you, it, you may not gain as much muscle as you would like to. Back in my 20s, I used to work out so hard. It was ridiculous. I took all the Mega Mass 2000, all the crap from Weeder, all the crap from GNC, and still was thin as a rail. I could not put on muscle. Um, so not not all of us are, are supposed to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger or Keto Savage or Danny Vega or um, Goody Beats. That's not how our genetics wants us to look. Most of the people that you see who are jacked up, who are eating the old way, they're using some injectable helpers that are technically illegal. Pretty much every professional bodybuilder. Pretty much. There are exceptions, of course. But most of those guys are using, getting a little extra injectable help to get as big as they are. Mike says, is there an easy way to track macros? Nisha and I both love uh, uh, Chronometer and uh, Carb Manager. Those are apps you can download on your phone. And then you can keep up with your carbs like that. Uh, they do count calories, but I don't care what your calorie count is. I just want you to keep the carbohydrates very, very low. Tim says, happy Patreon family member. I'm on Effexor XR 150 and Trazodone 150 for anxiety. How will I know when it's time to wean off? Keto for two months and 45 pounds down. Uh, Tim, I would guess that you're feeling better mentally. And what I would do is I would have a conversation with your doctor, Tim, and say, look, I'm on 150 of Effexor XR. I want to try a trial of taking 150 today, 75 tomorrow, and then back and forth, 150, 75 for a couple of months. Will you write me a script for 150s and for 75s? And then after two months of that, if you're still like, yeah, I feel pretty good, then you can go down to 75 milligrams a day and do that for a month or two. And then you can keep weaning down. And the same, the trazodone is, is pretty easy to break. The 150s come in a, it's like it comes in three parts, three triangles, and so you can just start, you can go to 100 and do that for a, a, few, a few weeks. Trazodone's easier to wean than Effexor. If any of you guys are on Effexor, uh, Prozac, Zoloft, uh, Lexapro, those those are those can be a real bitch to wean down. It sometimes takes a year 
of weaning down so you don't feel kooky when you try to stop them. But trazodone, you can probably go to 100 milligrams right now, Tim, just break off one of the triangles and just start taking two triangles instead of three. And then after two or three weeks of that, you can go down to 50 and and so forth. Uh, Tim's lost 45 pounds in two months of keto. So there's that. Charles Bronson. Hey, Charles says, saw some videos from some reputable YouTubers saying nitrates and nitrites. New studies show they're bad for you. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, Charles, I haven't seen any studies that aren't observational in nature and based on food frequency questionnaires or their rodent studies in rats and mice. I have never seen a study that shows causation between eating nitrates or drinking nitrates or nitrites and uh, any form of human disease. Uh, there are actually a couple of pharmaceutical companies right now studying nitrates, putting them in a pill and giving to you to them to you because they lower blood pressure. So pharmaceutical companies don't typically study things that they think are going to hurt people because that'd be a dumb waste of money for them. Uh, nitrates, the, part of their breakdown process is they, they, uh, they make nitric oxide, which lowers your blood pressure. Nitrates aren't bad for you. Uh, nitrites, all the other things they try to, the, the reindeer games they play to try to make bacon bad for you, it's all foolishness. None of it's true. It's all based on food frequency questionnaires. Papa A's off-grid retirement says new. Uh, he's a new viewer. Welcome, Papa. His A1C was 8.7 two months ago and is now down to 6.4. He's eating 80% protein, 20% carbs. Uh, so, Papa, you need to start eating more fat or you're going to develop some fatty acid um, deficiencies. You need some fat in your diet. I would uh, uh, bump the carbs down to 10%. And then split the difference between the protein and the fat. But you're doing well. Great start. Carrie says, Dr. Ken, what probiotic is best for fungal infections inside the eye? Uh, I, you know, there's not a shred of research that I'm aware of that probiotics are going to help an infection in your eye. Uh, there's a little bit of research that shows that they, they probably help uh, intestinal infections, but I don't know of any research showing that they help anywhere else. There's uh, probiotics have been greatly overpromised. Oh God, probiotics cure this, that, and the other, everything. They're the next coming of the savior. They, I, they're probably important for a few things. Uh, when I first started doing lives like this three years ago, three and a half years ago, I thought probiotics were a huge deal. And the more I've studied them and the more I've researched them, the more I've come to the conclusion that, yeah, people have wasted billions of dollars on probiotics and they probably haven't really helped much at all. Yeah, Jamie says he was literally reminded today is Halloween because of my blippy costume. So I'm happy to help, Jamie. That's what I'm here to do. And if I helped you remember it was Halloween by wearing my blippy costume, then that makes me happy. Yeah, yeah. Decline, decline, decline says that I pronounced Sawin properly. For the first couple of years, I knew about it. Decline, I, I called it Sam Hain. Didn't I was I was an idiot American. I didn't know how to pronounce it, but now I do. So thanks for noticing that. Red Sage, help. I was I was 168 and went down to 134, but my total cholesterol is now 417. Yeah, you're what's called a lean mass hyper responder, Red Sage. It's, it's not dangerous uh, as long as your triglycerides are normal and your HDL is normal and your blood sugar and your fasting insulin and C-peptide are normal, you're healthy, Okay. Uh, there is a website called cholesterolcode.com that will explain to you what a lean mass hyper responder is. Any of you guys, you went keto and your, your total cholesterol and your LDL cholesterol went sky high. Don't freak out. That's not necessarily a dangerous thing. My good friend Dave Feldman will explain it to you at cholesterolcode.com. Tracy says, can I drink too much coffee on carnivore? I'm 53, finally 100% carnivore and down 10 pounds in two weeks. Uh, Tracy's also a patron. Thanks for your support, Tracy. Um, as long as you're drinking coffee because you enjoy it, I don't think you're ever going to drink too much coffee. 
Now, if you enter a coffee drinking contest and the prize is 1,000 pounds, you might drink too much coffee trying to win the 1,000 pounds. But if you're just drinking coffee for pleasure because you like it, your body's going to turn off the pleasure reward feedback if you get close to drinking too much coffee for it to in any way be dangerous or bad for you. Humans have been drinking coffee now for what, six or 7,000 years? That's long enough for us to be able to get some feedback from my body and say, yep, you've had enough. You need to stop. Typically for me, if I start getting the jitters like this, that means, yep, you need to stop. You've had enough coffee. But that rarely happens anymore because I listen to my body. Yeah, Carolyn, I'm blippy for Halloween. Becky Berry is also blippy. And Nisha is, is, is mama blippy. So we're all blippy in this household. I made uh, same name smile. I'm glad that's I'm, I'm here to help your health and make you smile. That's I love it. Please touch on uh, is that cocoa butter or cacao butter? Uh, I think cocoa butter is is a pretty decent fat. It is a plant fat. I'd much rather you use animal fats like beef tallow and bacon grease, uh, goose fat, duck fat, all that stuff. And then butter. Let's not forget butter and ghee. Those are great fats, but if you like cocoa butter, I think it's fine as long as you get a, a, a real cocoa butter that's not half bullshit because sometimes they are. Let's see what else we got here. Did I already get that one? Oh, Beckett is already out. Um, Olivia wanted to see Beckett and Nisha's costume too. Beckett's already out trick-or-treating with Lovey. We're going to join them later. Nisha, do you still have your costume on? Olivia wants to see your costume really bad. I might talk her into it. We'll see. Uh, great man says, hey, Dr. Barry, is carbonated water safe? I did some research and found out that Topo Chico had the highest level of PFAS chemicals. Yeah, that was true, great man. And we stopped drinking it because of that. But they issued a press release and said, oh, we fixed that problem. And so uh, we do drink Topo Chico again now. So this is Mama Blippy. Where are your glasses? I gave them to Beckett. Oh, gotcha. Beckett lost his little baby glasses. So, yeah. I think your Blippy's cuter than mine. Yeah? Yeah. Thanks. So also, I have a video on this channel about carbonated water. Funny you should ask. Go watch my YouTube video. I posted it a week or two ago. Carbonated water is completely safe. There's no danger from it at all. Hang on. I'm crooked here. There you go. That's much better now. Yeah, I feel better. Uh, Kim Sanders, thanks for the super chat. Kim says, Pamela Taylor wants to know if carnivore is good for diverticulitis. So what's bad for diverticulitis is eating lots of highly processed grains and sugar and vegetable oils. And so carnivore doesn't contain any of those things. Carnivore is just fatty meat and eggs, uh, none, neither of which causes diverticulitis or causes, causes diverticulitis flare-ups. So, uh, I mean, how, how many people are watching right now that you used to have bad flare-ups of diverticulitis and you don't anymore eating a fatty meat heavy diet, either keto or ketovore or carnivore? Yeah, absolutely. Pam Taylor, you need to, you need to stop eating the diets that your doctor's probably recommending for you. And, uh, even your gastroenterologist is probably giving you a, a diet that's actually going to make your risk of developing diverticulitis worse. You need to eat a proper human diet. Thanks, Kim, for bringing that to my attention. Thanks for the super chat, Muriel. Guys, if you have a question you really want to get me to answer, if you attach it to a super chat, it goes to the top. That's how I'm able to see all those. But then at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you a way that you can get your detailed answers from me directly. Uh, let's see. Dave, what's an A1C? That's a glycated hemoglobin. That tells us if you're eating too much sugar for your personal biochemistry, that's what an A1C is. Uh, Hewlett says, thoughts on colloidal minerals? I think they're fine. You just got to make sure that there's enough minerals in the, the product that you buy. That's why I love Keto Chow's Daily Minerals is because they, it has a significant amount of bioabsorbable minerals in it. And that's, that's why I help them design that is because... A lot of people are taking these, it's like trace minerals. And when they say trace, they mean trace because there's almost no minerals in the solution. Uh, 
All right, let's see. Susan says, Dr. Barry, my body temp average is 96.5, never over 97. Uh, my TSH is 0.97, but doctor says it's normal, nothing to worry about. Should I be worried? Should I request more testing on thyroid? Yeah. Now, you may just be someone who has a lower than average body temperature. Body temperature follows a normal distribution curve. Has anybody seen me do that motion before? Most people's body temp is 98.6 or 37 degrees Celsius, right? But there are people on this end of the curve and this on this end of the curve who have a higher body temp naturally or a lower body temp naturally. But you're right, your implication is that you might have undiagnosed hypothyroidism and you might, you need a full thyroid panel. Uh, and I've listed that panel inside my Patreon group. And I think I put it on my Facebook page before as well. Anatoly from Russia is watching. Hey, Anatoly. Uh, strategic counseling says I'm new and I need to know how to send a super chat. It's a button down here somewhere. That's, I think it says super chat. Somebody help strategic counseling out. I'm, I'm not uh, sure I've sent other people super chats, but I, I, it's been a minute. All right. If you guys have questions about like, what's the routine labs? I saw a question go by. What labs? I'm, I'm 40. I'm 50. I'm 60 years old. What labs should I ask my doctor for at least once a year? I've got that complete list in my Patreon group. Muriel says, is milk without lactose okay for a good diet? I can't do without milk. So milk is made for baby mammals, for infant mammals. That's what it's for is to help them grow and gain weight as quickly as possible. I think the fat in milk, like butter and ghee, are totally fine for you. Some people, uh, when they drink lactose-free milk, they seem to do fine. Other people still have inflammatory symptoms because many of the bovine proteins in milk, they're made for cows, not made for you. And so it'll cause inflammation in many people. Some people, the inflammation shows itself in their skin some in their mental function, some in their bones and joints, and some people in their gut. My grandmother is, a, I call her part snake because her routine body temperature is 97, always. And if she has a 98.6, she's sick and she's got a fever. That She's been that way my whole life. And I'm on the opposite end. My just routine body temperature is about 98.5. I'm always run uh, run higher than you should. Um, but yeah, my grandmother's low. I run high and most people are right in the middle at, at close to 98.6, but I'm, I'm usually about 99. That's what mine runs. Just if I'm feeling perfectly normal, Northlandka. Hi, Dr. Barry patron here. Wanted to thank you for saving my life off insulin off immune suppressants for rheumatoid arthritis, have lost 109 pounds. My A1C went from 8.5 down on insulin. On insulin, his A1C was 5.5. Now it's 4.8 off insulin, paying it forward big time, Roxana. Thank you so much, Roxana, for sharing that. That's the kind of stuff that happens uh, in our in our Patreon tribe group right there. That's the kind of stuff. We're not talking about, oh, I need to lose five pounds. We're talking about, hey, I need, to, I need you to save my life. That's what we do in there. We all help each other. That's awesome. Yep, Kevin, Kevin and Paola and Mitzi are answering newbie questions. Thanks, guys, for doing that. Whoa, there went a, who's this? Jesse Medina says, I'm going on 70 days on the carnivore diet. I frequently still get loose stools. Is this normal? Advise, is this normal or should I be concerned? If you're not having pain, cramping, bloating, discomfort, uh, it, I think that a lot of us just are going to have a lower Bristol score. That's a poop score. Some doctor actually put his name on a poop score. Uh, but a lot of carnivores just tend to have looser bowels than they had on a standard American diet. I don't think we know if this is normal yet or not. Uh, we need to do some research on this and I hope that's being done. But if you're not having pain, if you're not having any weird abdominal or pelvic symptoms, then you're probably not in any danger whatsoever. Shelly says on keto one month, intense 
strength, strength training, little weight lost. I'm 56 years old, 210 pounds and 61 inches help. So if you're doing an intense strength training, Shelly, you're going to, you're putting on muscle, right? And you're making your bones stronger and more dense. Those two things show up on the scale, just like fat does. I don't, I think some people think that the, the scales just measure fat. Uh, but if you, you've probably lost, how long did you say you've been on one month? You probably lost 10 pounds of fat but you've also put on eight or 10 pounds of muscle and bone and, and tendon and cartilage uh, and ligament. So this the scale is a, is a net you haven't lost or gained. That's why I tell everybody when they start keto, ketovore or carnivore, buy a Taylor's tape. I think I have one here. Beckett Berry didn't get it. No, I don't see it. I think Beckett got it, but it's just a tape. Like, like you go to the tailor, they measure your chest and your shoulders you need to take your measurements, Shelly, because what's going to happen is the scale may not move for another three months, but your measurements, your waist measurement, your hip measurement, your thigh measurement, they're going to keep getting smaller and smaller. It's called body recomposition. You're burning off fat and putting on muscle and you're making your bones stronger. And very often those things weigh the same amount as the fat you've lost. Franklin says, is there a natural fix for atrial fibrillation? Uh, it depends on the cause of your atrial fibrillation, Franklin. There's about 20 of them. And so you need to definitely see your cardiologist to find out which kind you have. But we've had many people reach out uh, and say, I, you know, I didn't have any aberrant tracks or, or electrical circuits. I just would just go into AFib for no reason. I started a proper human diet. Now that doesn't happen anymore. But if you've got an aberrant tract, you're probably going to have to get that ablated. It depends on the cause. Thank you, Joy Filters, for the super chat. Nancy Taylor says, hey, Dr. Barry, do you know why, sup why supplements that contain potassium contain so little of it, usually no more than 3% of RDA? Yeah, it's because um, doctors are very, very afraid to give you too much potassium because hyperkalemia can be quite dangerous. But the thing is, Nancy, if, is if you have normal kidney function, and you're not taking any medications that make you hold on to inappropriate amounts of potassium, then you're going to pee out any extra potassium you eat. So if you watch my YouTube video about potassium rich foods and you just start eating the hell out of those foods, if you get too much potassium, you're just going to pee it out. That's how the body works with any of the electrolytes or minerals. If you eat too much, you pee it out. But if you have impaired kidney function, you may not be able to get rid of all of it. And that's why the, the potassium supplements, like it's 99 micrograms and stuff, is because of that, that very reason. Thanks for the super chat. All right, let's see what else we got here. Somebody's making fun of my outfit. This, I did this for Beckett Berry. Stop making fun of me. I'm a good dad. Daniel says, following the ro a rosacea diet, no more steroid cream or flushing at all. No redness or flushing at all. Thanks, Doc. My partner cut out industrial food oils. Fibro is way better. Yeah, so if any of you guys have rosacea, I've got a YouTube video about that. And Daniel used it to get rid of his rosacea. I have a video about fibromyalgia. If you know anyone who has fibromyalgia, share my YouTube video with them. Uh, we've had hundreds of people comment on that video and say, after I followed the proper human diet, my fibromyalgia is essentially gone. I don't have any symptoms because you guys with fibro know there's no blood tests for fibro. There's no x-ray or MRI that we can go, oh, look, you've got fibromyalgia. It's just a diagnosis of symptoms. And so if all of your fibromyalgia symptoms go away, do you still have fibromyalgia? Just a question. Think about that. That's awesome, Daniel. I'm so glad your rosacea is better. I actually have a touch of rosacea. You can't tell it now, eating a proper human diet. But back when I was eating crap, I had I had the red, the little red flush right here all the time. And I actually got some of the, a little bit of touch of rhinophyma on my nose. And I was like, I cannot be W.C. Fields. Anybody know who that is? An old comedian. He had he had terrible rosacea and his nose just looked like a cauliflower as he got older. Heather G says, what causes more loose skin? Losing weight quickly or the amount you lose? Yes. 
it's it's probably a combination of both. Uh, if you, especially if you lose weight very quickly in an unhealthy fashion, like if you're starving yourself with Metafast or the uh, protein sparing modified fast, where you're eating only 500 calories a day, like our friend earlier, and you're starving yourself then you're not giving your skin all of the nutrition it needs to, to keep itself healthy because it needs fatty acids. It doesn't just need protein. And so, but it, and so if you're losing it fast in an unhealthy way, taking Adipex, taking any of the pharmaceuticals that make you lose weight really fast, then you're probably going to have extra loose skin. Or if you're, if you've got, if you've lost 200 pounds, which a lot of people on keto have done, you're going to have some excess skin. And I've got a YouTube video on this channel about loose skin and, and what you can do. And the, and the I'll give you a hint. It's intermittent fasting and longer fasting. You can actually tighten that skin up substantially. Now, it may not tighten back up as tight as you want it, as tight as it was when you were 16 years old. But you are going to be able to tighten it up to some degree with intermittent fasting. Uh, thanks, BK Bulls. Thank you, Sherry, for the super chat. Could low sodium cause cause leg and ankle swelling? Yep, uh, a lot of times if, if people who are following a very low sodium diet recommended by their doctor, they'll have edema. And then when they hear one of my videos and start eating salt to taste, their edema goes away. Devil's Gaming says, can you please talk about ankylosing spondylitis? My brother has had it since 2016. Also lactose intolerant medications and pen injections, which is monthly. Yeah. So ankylosing spondylitis is at least some degree autoimmune in nature. Also, there's a degree of, of, of chronic inappropriate inflammation in the joints, right? And so ankylosing spondylitis is just like any other autoimmune condition, just like any other inflammatory conditions. It's at least in to some degree caused and made worse by your current diets. Now, there is a genetic component to AS. There's no doubt about that. But it's not nearly as big as most doctors would have you believe. Uh, the, the genetic component to ankylosing spondylitis is probably 1%, 2%, 3%. That's your risk if you were eating a proper human diet from the day you were born. You just wouldn't have developed it. But since you're eating crap, you didn't know better. Now you've got AS and now you're having to do all these things. The damage that's already been done is probably mostly permanent, but you can definitely slow down the, the progression. You can decrease the severity and you can also decrease the frequency of flare-ups of your ankylosing spondylitis by eating a proper human diet. And you'll probably be able to stop some of the, the autoimmune medications. Thank you. Thank you, BK Bulls. Ah, uh, Gerald says, is glycine powder a carb? Pretty sure glycine's an amino acid, Gerald, Ger Gerard, Gerard, sorry, Gerard, mispronounced that. You probably hate that. Uh, oh, you guys are talking among yourself. Absolutely. That's always encouraged. Um, let's see. We've been going for almost an hour here. Let me tell you, if you, if you have specific questions that are really important to you about your health, about medications you're taking, about your diet, how to do keto right, how to do carnivore right. I have a, a Patreon group that's private and protected. And uh, we've got over 3,000 members in there now of people just like you who are, who are there to try to improve their health, to learn from each other, to teach each other. It's a great tribe. I promise you it is. Uh, you can you can join our Patreon tribe for a dollar a month, three bucks a month, five bucks a month or more. It's up to you just based on what you want to get out of it. There's a link down in the show notes. It's a super quick sign up and you literally can get your foot in the door for $1 a month. So that's less than one euro a month for you guys in the, in the EU. And that I've got more time in there. We do two extra live Q and A's just like this in there every week, but there's only a hundred or 200 people watching instead of 1,315 people. So there's not nearly as many questions, so I can go into much deeper detail on your particular question. Also, you can direct message me there and, and say, hey, these are my labs. Is this okay? Hey, these are the medicines I'm taking. What, what, what do you recommend I ask my doctor? Those things can happen between me and you personally on patreon.com. There's a link down below. Let's do a few more here. Red Sage. 
uh, says my LDL is 323. My HDL is 72. Great, great HDL. My triglycerides are 95. Great triglycerides. My blood glucose is 110. Not bad. My doctor wants to put me on Crestor, which is a statin. I would say watch my YouTube videos about cholesterol. Then watch Dr. David Diamond's videos. Mitzi or Kevin, will you type his name in the comments or maybe even a link to one of his videos? Dr. David Diamond is a PhD researcher at the University of South Florida. He's done all he, his entire career has been about researching cholesterol, LDL, triglycerides. That's what he does. And he's got great lectures on YouTube channel. I've interviewed him on this channel. He's got other, I think, uh, Low Carb USA. He's got a couple of his lectures that will help you understand that you're probably a lean mass hyper responder. Taking a statin is probably not going to decrease your risk of having a heart attack or a stroke or dying prematurely at all. Okay, but you need to make your own decision, make your own informed decision. Miss Brookie says, Dr. Barry, can keto or carnivore help someone with spinal stenosis? We've had several people with spinal stenosis reach out to us and tell us that their symptoms are 70%, 80%, 90% less severe when they're eating a proper human diet. And so I don't think it's going to just miraculously cure your spinal stenosis. You may wind up eventually still having to have surgery. But if you'd like to have 70% less severe symptoms or 90% less severe symptoms, I would highly encourage you to pick keto or carnivore, watch my keto 101 or carnivore 101 playlist here on this channel and start eating a proper human diet. Hey, that's it from Germany. Much love right back at you. Okay, guys, that's it for the blippy episode of Dr. Barry Q&A. Thanks for joining me. If you have more questions for me, become a patron on patreon.com. There's a link down below. Uh, it's, I was glad to hang out with you guys on this Halloween. Uh, you can celebrate Halloween with bacon and boiled eggs and fatty meat just as easily as you can celebrate it with candy corn. Okay. This is Dr. Barry. See you next time.